Yes, I think the um, re-emergence of the club as a force in English football has gone hand in hand with, with Steve's achievement. Um, I think as a manager and as a coach, you get a lot of satisfaction seeing a boy that you take from uh, second division club's reserves and watch him develop into an international player. Um, there's some hard work gone into the development of Steve. We've, we've worked hard with his finishing, his first touch, things like that, but uh, uh, we've got to recognise how much the boy's put into the game and how much he's improved himself. Um, and he's had a tremendous attitude to work. He's wanted to, to get better. He's wanted to prove people wrong at West Brom who were prepared to sell him. Uh, I think that's been one of the motivating forces behind his um, images. Uh, he's treated like a god now by, by the people on the South Bank and the John Island stand. Um, and he really has emerged as, uh, I would say, uh, the most professional player that I've ever worked with or played with in terms of his ability to do the job that he's paid to do. And that is obviously to score goals. And I've never come across anybody better at that job than, than, than Steve does it. That's towards Ball now, he's in with a chance. And he's found the back of the net. I was here when we signed Steve in November 86 and uh, the directors uh, put up the necessary cash to sign uh, Steve and Andy Thompson on the same day. That was a big risk at the time, wasn't it? Well, that's right. I mean, there wasn't a lot of money about. I mean, the club, right from since it started in 86, the new company has been completely self-financing. I mean, it doesn't have any arrangements for overdraft facilities so all the money it generates through gate receipts commercial income etc we have to plow back into the game uh, and use for buying players steve bull proving to be one of wall's better buys oh tremendous i mean steve has now well i mean his value you can't estimate uh, really what his true value is but uh, for sixty-four thousand pounds uh, tremendous investment to steal to the byline, the cross comes in. Isn't far away, Dennison. Ball with a header. Steve Ball came to us from West Bromwich Albion through uh, the activity of our chief scout, Ron Dukes, who'd watched him and considered that uh, he would be a good player, uh, uh, particularly as we were at that moment of time in the fourth division. So the co a colleague of mine, myself, we. We agreed at that time to uh, sign Steve Bull. Um, the terms seemed right, apart from the, the fact that we did a cross deal with West Bromwich, which gives them part of the profits, which is a but still that's the. I'm sure West Bromwich feel as uh, as much sorrow about that as uh, we are, <coughs> in fact, over the moon about. It. Well, Ron Duke says, Wolves Chief Scout, you were well aware of the abilities of Steve Bull and at the time that Wolves were struggling and not scoring any goals, uh, he seemed a, a life target at West Bromwich Albion, is that right? Uh, yes, Steve was scoring goals in the, in the Albion reserve side. Um, Albion reserves are uh, a side that uh, one, is, one frequently goes to watch, as does uh, as are all the other Midland Reserve sides, um, the Central League is a, is, a, is a reasonable recruiting ground, particularly when, when Wolves at that time were, were in the fourth division. Uh, and um, I, I felt in the Albany Reserve side there were several players who, who uh, could move uh, and do well in the fourth or third divisions. One isn't able to say that they're going to go right the way through, as some of them have done ultimately. Um, and Ball was a lad who'd come to Albion from Tipton, um, had certainly improved in the 12 months uh, since I'd seen him play for Tipton, um, and uh, was, was consistently scoring goals and consistently uh, causing himself a nuisance to the defence because he was perpetually on the go. Uh, mobility and, uh, and, and enthusiasm were the hallmarks that one, one saw in him. Were you surprised then that uh, a young goal scorer like that was released by Ron Saunders? Um, well, I can't look into Ron Saunders' mind. I don't know what 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 he what his program was. He he got a number of strikers in the result at that particular time. Of people like Verardi and Cooks who were not getting regular games in the first team. Um, you can only play X number of players in your first team. You make your assessment, and he made the assessment that. Uh, 
although he'd given the ball a game or so in the, in the, in the first team and he, he had actually scored, um, it wasn't for him. Were you reluctant or, or cautious perhaps at uh, the price that was quoted by West Bromwich Albion? Well, the prices have nothing to do with me, the reality. Uh, I think somebody can play or somebody can't play and it's for the manager and the board to decide uh, whether the price is uh, right too high or what. Um, with hindsight, everyone would say it's, it's not very much. At the time, 50,000 was a was a big fee for Wolves. Um, and uh, we, we subsequently went back and bought um, uh, two other players from the Albany in, in, in a very short space of time. In fact, we bought one the same day as, um, uh, as Wolves. Andy um, Thompson. Andy Thompson. And, and both of them were very, very speedy transfers. Andy, you, perhaps better than anybody else at Molyneux, know Steve Ball because you were with him at West Bromwich Albion. When he came to, to West Brom as a raw, non-league player, how did the, the rest of the professionals at, uh, at the Hawthorns view him? Um, well, first of all, he came on trial to start with before he ever signed professional, and he was like um, doing well in the reserves, knocking a few goals in, and um, I think that's what got him the contract at the club. But he was um, doing well scoring in the reserves. Were you surprised that West Brom were prepared to, to let somebody who was scoring goals go and who had a potential and was young to, to another club? Um, I was very surprised. Like I was waiting in the offices of the Albion when Steve came in because they told me I was travelling down with somebody else for the morning. But I was very surprised to let him go because the amount of goals he had scored for the second team. And he scored, I think it was three and five games for the first team when he played then. So I was very surprised that they let him go. Now, what was the story around the two of you moving? Because it happened very, very quickly, didn't it? Yeah, well, I just went in for training on the one morning, and like one of the trainers says to me, um, the manager wants to see you down the ground, so I travelled down to the ground. He says, um, what's coming for you? They made an offer, and we've agreed, because didn't talk terms. And I was about to set off, and then they says, wait a minute, there's somebody else coming down there. <laughs> and and somebody else yeah, was Steve. Steve coming to the office. And you developed a great friendship with him from that time, didn't you? Yeah, well, we travelled down together, like, cause Steve had the car, and we travelled down, and he's just gone from there, because, like, we've come together. And you came into a fourth division set-up here, a pretty poor ground after the Hawthorns, which is a, a beautiful setup. You must have uh, wondered whether you were making the right decision, perhaps? Um, it did get through my mind after I made the decision, like, because um, we just played Chorley, and we just lost 3-0 when I did sign, but from then we've done well, we've battled hard, and we've come up. Now, when you came, Steve went in first to see the manager, I believe, and he, Graham Turner, Turner says, was the fastest signing he's ever made until he signed you. Yeah, what um, well, he says, um, whatever, it um, looks a good setup, like, and he says, like, they're building for the future now. So we went in and like, talked to the manager, and what he offered us, uh, we liked, so we signed. Steve, in his period with us, has been the makings of the club, really. If one takes into account his goals, that's the reason we won the the fourth division, the reason we won the third division. He's a tremendous character. I've dealt with him and his contracts over the last two years. He's uh, been in to see me on both occasions, particularly recently on his trip back from Italy. But it's been a pleasure to do with uh, the chap. I mean, the two interviews to, to uh, fix his salary have taken 15 minutes at the most. Uh, we've had no cause to disagree and uh, anything he's asked for, not we've given him, but we've edged a little bit each way and he's, he said, yes, I never want to leave this club. And I take the view that if he never wants to leave this club, he won't leave this club. There's a peculiar tradition here at Wolves which involves all the players training on the club's car park. What's the history behind this? Yes, this is uh, a tradition. The manager started a, a few uh, seasons ago um, where they used to have a little five-a-side on the car parks and I think the following day when we played the game we had a tremendous result and they've done it ever since and the players seem to enjoy it. They have a little bit of... Uh, uh, competition there's a yellow jersey which uh, is awarded to the worst performance of the morning on the car park and that causes a little interest between the players and I think it, it gives a good spirit for the players prior to to the game on Saturday and they seem to really enjoy it. Has Steve ever been awarded the yellow jersey? Well, I believe he's had it once or twice without, without doubt um, uh, there have been mornings when he's looked abysmal and 
Uh, he's tried his hand at playing at the back at times, and uh, uh, but yes, he's, he's, he's had things like that. His toughness is, is built around wanting to score goals. It's as simple as that. I don't think he's a dirty player, um, but when he gets the sight of goal and the ball is around about him, uh, nothing stands in his way or he doesn't want anything to stand in his way and uh, he's prepared to knock defenders uh, sideways if necessary to get a strike at goal and I think that is um, fuel of that sort of image of uh, a bull type player um, but I think that he's also taken a lot of stick from defenders and at times intimidation and unfortunately on two or three occasions he's reacting to that intimidation um, but I think that having been sent off a couple of times uh, he's learned from that and I see him now keeping a cool ahead, uh, prepared to take the intimidation and the hard tackling and get up and get on it. And it would be fair to say he certainly gives as good as he gets out there. I love him, okay. I was very, very, very involved in him. I mean, I'd snap at anything, I'd have a swing, I'd have a kick, I'd, have, you know, I'd do anything to stop the defender and stop pulling me. But now I think to myself, I'll just turn around and I'll look at him and I'll laugh at him. And I'll put the ball in the back of the net and that hurts him more. And it's far more pleasurable for you than getting a yellow yeah, card. Yeah, punch into me and yeah. saying, oh, God, I've sent off again, like, you know what I mean? Mm. How much do you have to concentrate during a game? How, how often can you have a lapse of concentration? Or kind of well, you have, to, you have to put your shirt on, that's it. Forget everything, the radio's off, everything, nobody's talking to you, whatever. You just have to go on that pitch for 90 minutes and concentrate all on the game. Forget the fans, forget the television, forget everything. In fact, the only person in the upper tier of the... Waterloo Road stand is the Wolves manager, Grant Turner. And that drops the ball, fires one, one nil! I'll oh, be delighted, that's put Wolves ahead. Turn from Denison. That's a beautiful ball in from much laser for ball. Four nil! Leicester full back. That's a great ball through. Steel now. Ball in again, can he get his hat trick? He can! Three nil! Three goals for Wolves, 5 nil to Wolves. Taylor allowed space to chest it down, it wasn't a good, a good layoff from him, but uh, certainly allowed a little too much space. And Dennis neatly through for Bellamy, Wolves away on this ladder now. Through with a run on goal, fires it, 2-0. Oh, you can't allow that sort of space to Steve Ball. His finishing is absolutely lethal. And you really cannot afford to let him get that sort of space behind the defence. Now Steele. It's a good cross to the far post. Ball's there. 3-0. Who will chase after this? Gets there ahead of Rennie. Gets away from him. Fires one in. Straight through the keeper's legs. Oh, poor Ronnie Sinclair. Would you believe it? Well, you have to feel sorry for 